Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Jensen's. Hope that you're doing well. Time to talk about some upcoming new releases. What do we got today? What new stuff is going to grace us with its presence very soon? That sounds, that sounds actually way more intense than this is. Grace me with your presence, oh fragrance. Uh, we've got a new Carolina Herrera. We have a new The Most Wanted and three new parfum iterations of fragrances from Guerlain, including Loam it all. So a whole bunch of new stuff coming our way once again. Let's start talking about it. I'm gonna have linked in the description where you can check out more information on these fragrances at ifragranceofficial.com. So that's where you're gonna wanna go to keep up to date with uh, upcoming new releases and leaks. Before we start talking about the first fragrance, I would like to give you these codes that you can use if you shop online at any of these different websites, GS11, at fragflex.com, 11% off the entire website. And then we got the new code for the perfume box to save yourself 10% on there. The codes at Triple Traders, Max Aroma, all the goodies. All right, what do we want to talk about first? Well, let's do the new Herrera, the new Carolina Herrera. I know, I know. Yay, a new Herrera, wow. Another limited edition fragrance. Wow. I don't know whether to get excited for these or, or just not to care. Sometimes they're actually really, really good. Like CH Passion, that stuff is awesome. That stuff is fire. Other ones are forgettable, you could say. Uh, I think the main issue with these being limited editions is, you know, it's kind of twofold. On the one hand, it's cool because you can grab them. And then uh, once they're they're gone, because again, limited edition, then you have something that nobody else can really get, at least not easily. On the other hand, it can suck because if they come up with something amazing where you're like, oh dude, I wanna wear this forever. And then it's discontinued the next year. You're just kind of like, ah, that hurts my soul. Herrera, why? So this new one is CH Birds of Paradise. On the bottle, looks like you got a couple little toucans hanging out. Uh, let's see what they say about it. Embark on an aromatic journey to the tropics with CH Men Birds of Paradise, a new limited edition mint fragrance from Carolina Herrera. This captivating eau de parfum will evoke a rainy and humid afternoon on a paradise island and transport you to sunny beaches and lush tropical landscapes. With this exterior adorned with toucans, and it's aromatic blend of bergamot, violet leaves, and cashmere wood. But then it has some additional notes here as well. So the full note breakdown that we have right now is a top of Egyptian blue chamomile and violet leaves, a mid of tonka, cashmere, and sandalwood, and a base of woody notes. Uh, specifically, a wood accord carried by the currants and pure spruce balsam, it says. Carried by the currants. What does that mean? Like the currents, the water? Or are we talking like black currents, red currents? Currents? Interesting in a way here, because you got a lot of stuff going on. Paradise Island, a rainy, humid afternoon, which to me would make me think of like a rainforest. And then sunny beaches, lush tropical landscapes, toucans, all this stuff. And then they hit you with the notes of like violet, tonka, and wood and bergamot too, I believe. <laughs> it mentions bergamot up top and then in the full note breakdown, it, it doesn't have bergamot there. So I'm, I'm guessing there's bergamot as well. I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I think lush tropical rainforest, the first thing that pops into my mind is not Tonka and blue chamomile, but we'll have to wait and see. Could be absolutely fantastic. As I said, some of these uh, Herrera limited editions are just really good stuff. And then others are, <laughs> Not as much, not as much. Now, if you're asking me which way am I leaning on this one without having smelled it, I don't know. My confidence is uh, somewhere in the middle. Regardless though, I will pick this one up and hope for the best. And for what it's worth, the toucan bottle here, it doesn't look as bad as some of the other ones that have come out before in terms of just overall tackiness. CH Beasts, mm. Let's talk these Guerlain fragrances next and then wrap up with the most wanted new release. So like I said, three new Parfum editions of fragrances coming to us from Guerlain. They really basically just looked at the lines they had from in and were like, what if we, what if we just did Parfum like for all of them? That'd be cool, right? That, that would be, that'd be a hit, right? So we're gonna work through these. We're gonna start with Abbey Rouge Parfum. The perfumers of the Maison Guerlain reinterpret the amber sillage of the iconic Abbey Rouge taking inspiration from the universe of liqueurs. From this world, 
which has so many aspects in common with that of perfumery. They have drawn emblematic notes and a seductive and decisive aesthetic. Made from exceptional, highly concentrated ingredients, this perfume is extraordinarily irresistible. Don't know why I said it like that. So no breakdown here, bergamot and lime up top, liqueur, nutmeg and leather in the mid, vanilla styrax patchouli in the base. And it does say that uh, for this fragrance, Delphine Jelk imagined a vanilla liqueur with notes of leather inspired by a bourbon, a new intensity. So a vanilla leather bourbon, delicious. I will say that the last iteration in this line was, uh, was actually really, really good. Definitely something more for people that are into fragrances, like your average Joe, your average guy who's you know, shopping for stuff at Macy's or Nordstrom or something like that, probably is not gonna really be into it. But Rouge Privé, for people who were into fragrances, are into fragrances, and again, this is a release from 2023, uh, is a fragrance that was generally very well accepted and received. That one, of course, also made use of vanilla and leather, so you have that aspect in common between that one and this one. Uh, but here you have the vanilla, bourbon, liqueur, accord, uh, Styrax, patchouli. Well, there's, there's patchouli in the last one as well, but mainly it's that boozy aspect uh, that seems to be the differentiating factor between this iteration and the previous iteration. And again, with how much I enjoyed the last one, and I know a lot of you did as well, this is something I am very much looking forward to. Before we talk on the new Loam all, let's talk about the new Vetiver, Guerlain Vetiver Parfum 2024. I like Vetiver. Yeah, that's, that's my jam, so um, I'm excited for this one. I can already see a bunch of you out there just, oh, Vetiver. Oh, I can't. I just, I can't with this Vetiver freaking. That's okay. I'll buy two bottles. One for me, and also one for me. The perfumers of Maison Guerlain reinterpret the sillage of the iconic Vetiver, taking inspiration from the universe of liqueurs. That sounds familiar from this world, which has so many aspects in common of, I'm not reading this again. A perfumer says for this one, for Vetiver Le Parfum, I imagined an even more aromatic and intense beginning. Juniper berries, coriander, and licorice, all like an infused gin. So notes here, bergamot, juniper, orange up top, vetiver, nutmeg, iris in the mid, smoke, licorice, and tonka in the base. And uh, I'm assuming some sort of gin aspect as well since that is the liquor of choice here, which Juniper makes sense for that. Now, again, while I love Vetiver very much, I know a bunch of people out there do not. Sometimes that woodiness, the way that it can come across, uh, sometimes an earthy aspect to it, a smoky aspect, which would appear what this is going to be based off the base there with smoke, licorice, and tonka. Sometimes Vetiver can be a bit much for some people. So I am not very convinced that this is going to be necessarily a beginner friendly vetiver fragrance that may still be something like gray vetiver by Tom Ford that you may want to go for. To be fair though, Guerlain's vetiver has never been super beginner centered. It's had good depth to it, nice body to it. And uh, I don't find it particularly challenging, but I know that uh, that scent profile is not for everybody. Regardless, another one I am pumped about, but the one that I think most people are going to be excited about of these three is Loam Ideal Parfum. And you're never gonna believe this, but the perfumers of Maison Guerlain have reinterpreted the woody sillage of the iconic Loam Ideal, taking inspiration from the universe of liqueurs from this world, which has so many aspects in common with <laughs> For Loam Ideal Le Parfum, I imagined an almond turning into ambrette, taking an even more woody and intense scent. Almond into ambrette. Amaretto. So this one has a top of almond bergamot spices, mid of patchouli leather and neroli, base of sandalwood musk, lemon. Lemon in the in the base? Are we, are we, sure, are we sure about that? Uh, I question that. Leather in the mid, patchouli in the mid, lemon in the base? Nah, I don't know, friend. I don't know. Now, Lomidiol has, uh, up until this point, basically switched seasons with each release. So you'll have a release that's better for fall and winter than one for spring and summer. Fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer. And it's been like that since the very first one was released. And since the last iteration was Platine Privé, that one more spring and summer, that means this one 
should definitely be fall winter. And with it being the Parfum iteration, that makes sense. Which means guys, that the next Lomity All, the next next, that one's gonna be a spring and summer one. I'm not telling you if it's gonna be good or not, I'm just telling you that's what it's gonna be. But this one would appear to have, if these notes are correct, a decent amount of freshness to it, I would think. If it does indeed have Neroli, Lemon, and Bergamot as uh, some of the notes here. Should have a nice freshness initially, some uh, clean classiness I would expect. And then they say what, it has an even more woody and intense scent. The almond turning into ambrette. I do wonder if they're going to uh, go that aspect. I'm assuming so, that's what they say. A more woody intensity here. Maybe not quite as much sweetness in this one, which would set it apart, you know, different from the Eau de Parfum and the Extreme iterations, which are the ones people typically talk about when we're talking uh, fall and winter time fragrances in this line. Of course, we also have the Intense iteration and the OG as well, but Eau de Parfum and Extreme, probably the ones that get the most hype. Those are also the sweetest ones. So if they, they dial down that sweetness, ramp up the woodiness, that would have the standalone and could be really interesting. So a new Lomity all, and now we end with the most wanted. So Azaro did Wanted Eau de Parfum as their last release in the Wanted line. And that one did not really hit that hard uh, compared to the most wanted fragrances. And so uh, I guess they were like, ah, back to the most wanted, yeah. Could have came out with Wanted Parfum or Wanted Elixir or something and they said, <laughs> I think our bread is buttered over here, so let's go back to that. So this is the most wanted Eau de Toilette Intense. Experience the unmistakable allure of Azaro, the most wanted Eau de Toilette Intense, an addictive fragrance that combines intense freshness with boundless sensuality. Ideal for the confident man who dares to walk his own path. All fragrances are for the confident man who dares to walk his own path. I think I've read something like that. 15,000 times. I have yet to see a fragrance that says, this is ideal for the man who lacks all confidence and follows everyone like a sheeple. Like, oh, that's, that's for me. I gotta get it. Azaro, the most wanted Eau de Toilette Intense, takes you on an enchanting journey full of freshness and seduction. Vibrant notes of green Mediterranean bergamot open the experience with a refreshing sensation, followed by warm notes of lavender from Provence, adding an unmistakable sense of sensuality. The whole is rounded off with a rich woody moss liqueur accord that leaves a lasting impression. This unique combination results in an unforgettable fragrance experience that envelops the wearer in self-confidence and charisma. It does have a pretty cool looking bottle here. It has the uh, blacked out top, keeping in with the most wanted aesthetic. And then you have a pretty nice little gradient down there. Kind of like a smoked gray looking gradient almost. I don't know moss liqueur, <laughs> so I'm looking this up right now because my immediate reaction is, <laughs> what? Moss li liquor? Liqueur? So I get the moss part, right? That's very common in fragrances. I get the booze part, right? Also very common. Hmm, I don't know. So I'm looking up moss liqueur and it pulls up Icelandic schnapps, a true Viking drink, a powerful drink made from alcohol concentrates of Icelandic moss harvested from the highlands of Iceland. Is that, is, is that what we're, we're talking about that? Irish moss? I'm going to just assume here that it has some of the sweetness from the liqueur accord, and then also has a, a bit of a potentially earthy uh, green aspect from the moss. Lavender here, I am expecting to be on the sweeter side of things, uh, maybe a little warm as well. That would go hand in hand with the liquor idea, and then a nice freshness off the top with the bergamot essence. My hopes are high for this one because the most wanted uh, both iterations that are out currently are fantastic scents for fall and winter time that people just really are drawn to. And so to have something uh, in that line, but a little more different, uh, I think is, is very welcome. Not that there's anything wrong with the two of the most wanted that are out currently, uh, but they are decently close as far as how they come across overall. So getting something a little removed from that, but still maintaining that level of, of uh, mass appeal. That'd be nice. Although I will uh, take this moment to once again complain and say I want more notes. Three notes sucks. Give me, give me at least six, six notes. And when you look at the picture for the fragrance, it does have the bergamot, lavender, and then moss. 
So no, there's no like liquor there. It's not like a little bottle or anything like that. So I think it's going to concentrate more on that aspect than it will the liquor aspect of things, but we'll see. So there we go, guys. Some upcoming new releases, some fantastic, hopefully, fragrances to look forward to. It has been an avalanche of new releases at the beginning of the year, which I am very happy about. I love to get new things in and smell them. It does make me worry to an extent that as the year goes on, it's just gonna be a wasteland, just nothing coming out. But we can't worry about the future right now. We have to embrace the present. Something, 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 I don't know. It's being really motivational, you know? So let me know which of those five you're looking forward to the most. For me, mm -hmm. Most Wanted and the Lomity All, probably. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.